becomes the leader of the opposition. Can yeah. anybody? Mr. Speaker, can I thank the Prime Minister for his almost warm welcome? And can I also echo the comments that he has made? It is an immense privilege and the honour of my life to lead the Conservative Party. And I look forward to joining him at the Cenotaph this Remembrance Sunday. As leader of His Majesty's opposition, I will be taking a different approach to the last opposition by being a constructive opposition. And so I would like to start by congratulating President-elect Trump on his impressive victory this morning. The Prime Minister and the Foreign Secretary met him in September. Did the Foreign Secretary take that opportunity to apologise for making derogatory and scatological references, including, and I quote, Trump is not only a woman-hating, neo-Nazi, sympathising sociopath, he is also a profound threat to the international order. And if he did not apologise, will the Prime Minister do so now on his behalf? Mr Speaker, there will be many issues on which the Leader of the Opposition and I disagree, but there will be issues that do unite this House on national security and Ukraine, and I do look forward to working closely with her on that, and I will provide her with the information that she needs to discharge uh, her duties. That's the right thing for the country, and it's far more important than party politics. And the Foreign Secretary and I did meet uh, President-elect Trump just a few weeks ago uh, for dinner for about a couple of hours, and we uh, discussed a number of issues of global significance. It was a very constructive uh, exercise. Uh, Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister did not distance himself from the remarks made by the Foreign Secretary, and I'm very sure that President Trump will soon be calling to thank him for sending all of those North London Labour activists to campaign for his opponent. (laughs) Given that most of his Cabinet signed a motion to ban President Trump from addressing Parliament, will the Prime Minister show that he and his government can be more than student politicians by asking the Speaker to extend... Can they show that they can be more than student politicians? Order. Order. Mr Perkins, I don't need to any more. Your voice carries. It's like mine. Too loud. (laughs) Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will the Prime Minister show that he and his government can be more than student politicians by asking you, Mr Speaker to extend an invitation to President Trump to address Parliament on his next visit. Yeah. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition is giving a masterclass on student politics. Yeah. But seriously, Mr Speaker, we live in probably a more volatile world than we've lived in for many decades. It is absolutely crucial that we have a strong relationship, that strong special relationship forged in difficult circumstances between the US and the UK. We will continue to work, as we have done in the four months in government, on issues of security, our economy and global conflict. Mr Speaker, he does not answer the questions, just read the lines the officials have prepared for him. It doesn't sound like he wants to invite President-elect Trump to Parliament. He needs to look after the special relationship. The US is our single biggest trade partner. Given the risk of increased tariffs on UK exports, which threaten our manufacturing sector, will the Prime Minister commit now to continue the negotiations on our free trade agreement with the US, which the Biden administration cancelled when they came into office? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, of course we will discuss issues of our economy um, with the President elect, um, as we already have done. Economy, security and global conflict are issues of real significance that ought to unite this House. But when it comes comes to the economy, what we have done with our budget is to fix the foundations after 14 years. Return to economic stability of the £22 million black hole. We have protected the pay slips of working people. the single biggest investment in our country for a generation in the NHS, in schools and homes. We've given a pay rise to the three women lowest paid. Now, if she's opposed to that investment or the pay rise for working people, she's a straight talker, as I understand it. Perhaps she should say so. Mr Speaker, discuss, 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 chat, chat, chat. He has no plans whatsoever plans whatsoever for building on the special relationship. 
He needs to realise that we in this country rely on our single biggest trade partner. President Trump is also right to argue that Europe needs to increase its defence spending. The last Conservative government committed to raising defence spending to 2.5% by 2030. Will the Prime Minister finally match this commitment? Mr. Speaker, there is no more important duty than keeping the people of this country safe. And it was the Labour government that signed the NATO treaty in the first place, and we are strong supporters. We have a strategic defence review. We are committed to 2.5 per cent. Well, I would remind the public the last time 2.5 was met was under the last Labour government. For 14 years, and they never did it once. Last year, the NAO identified a £17 billion black hole in the MOD finances. The, the former Defence Secretary said the previous government hollowed out the armed forces. And the plan they put forward at the election was pure fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, he will not make that commitment. That is very clear. All that he is doing... I'm going to hear the questions. If the people who don't want to hear it, they can leave now. Come on. Mr Speaker, he will not make that commitment, and yet the world is getting more dangerous. His Chancellor's budget did not even mention defence. The Chancellor's budget last week was a copy and paste of Bidenomics. It turns out that a high spending, high borrowing, high inflation approach is less popular than she may have thought. May I suggest he now urge her to change course, or is he determined to be a one-term leader? Prime Minister. Uh, the one thing I learned as leader of the opposition is a good idea to listen to what the government is actually saying. I think she just said that defence wasn't mentioned in the budget. It was seven days ago that it was absolutely clear and central to the budget, as was economic growth. We are fixing the foundations. We're giving a pay rise to millions of people. We're picking up the mess that they left, £22 billion, and a tax rate and a pay rise for working people. And I haven't heard yet her welcome that pay rise for the three million lowest paid workers. Does she now welcome it to stick to her previous policy that it's excessive? Mr Speaker, I was the one who raised the minimum wage last year as Business Secretary. I have a strong record on this, but we need to make sure that we balance the books. His scripted lines are showing that he has not even listened to the budget himself. So I will try a different question. Perhaps he can give something that is unscripted to the people watching. Farmers across the United Kingdom... Mr Speaker... Mr Speaker... Mr Speaker... Uh, order! Uh, I don't need any help. Can I just say, if somebody wants to leave, I'll be helping them do that. I'm going to hear the question, and I certainly want to hear the answer as well. So please, let's have some courtesy. Come. Mr Speaker, we have heard him repeat the lines on the television, fixing the foundations and so on. But what does he say... Over and over again, but what does he say to farmers who are facing uncertainty about their futures as a result of the increased taxes announced by the Chancellor? I am very clear that we would reverse Labour's cruel family farms tax. What can he say now to reassure the farming community who provides security for the whole nation? 